It's day eight on my gone carnivore journey. I'm here early in the morning in the pool. It's middle of winter. The water temperature's a uh, little nit nippy, 80 degrees in the water temperature. Of course, we've had some cold nights, you know, drip dropping all the way down to maybe in the mid 70s at night and getting up towards high 80s, 90 in a day. But the water's still a little nippy. But I was watching some other channels from people who are on and have done the carnivore journey. And the one theme that keeps coming out amongst so many people who were overweight was how depressed they were, how depression just gripped them. And to be honest, I've never had that problem. I've not been depressed. You know, I was fat and happy. I was never depressed. I was always accomplishing things. I've done a lot, you know. Uh, it's, it's all been a me. It all goes back to my definition of success, I think. When I defined it a long time ago, it was, I wanna do what I want, when I want, and how I want. And I've lived my entire life trying to do exactly that. And I think that keeps me from being depressed. But so many people say going on a strict carnivore diet will actually lower your depression level. And I'm not sure how it could lower mine because I'm not depressed at all. I mean, I'm here in a pool villa in beautiful Thailand where the weather's pretty awesome. I mean, this is, this is late January. And, you know, the high is going to go up to, I don't, let me check my watch here. I don't know. It says it's going up to 33 degrees Celsius today. So 33 degrees Celsius is 92. Not bad. I'll take that for like late January. Let's see what we have been in uh, Cincinnati where I grew up in late January. I don't know what it is, but they've had some terribly cold weather up there the last couple of weeks. Ours hasn't. Ours was warmer than this. This is this is the cool part. But hey, I've never been depressed, but they say carnivores, that's a bad thing. Now, today, day eight, I did my morning weigh in and I weighed exactly the same as I did day seven. Day seven, I ended up having that brisket that we cooked for 72 hours sous vide. And that 72 hour cooked brisket was delicious. I mean, just melt in your mouth, unbelievably tasty. Uh, and I'm sure we'll do better next time that we want to do a brisket, but it takes so long to cook a brisket well. Uh, to, to cook it well, not well done, but well, we cooked it medium rare cooked up brisket for like 72 hours at 66 degrees internal temperature uh, Celsius. And, and so I did weighed the same, but I ate that late and it's probably still in me. So, and I ate a lot of it too. I mean, yeah, this piece of brisket was about that big. I ate two thirds of it and it was pretty thick two inches maybe. It was a pointy part of the brisket. Now I don't have a smoker and I don't have an air fryer. Noah's been asking, 
Go get an air fryer. Well, I haven't seen a really good one. I don't want a really bad one. There's so many things that I would, there's so many items that I would get from the United States that I see on these channels that people use that just look amazing. This uh, air fryer from Dreo, D-R-E-O, I think. It's called the Chef Maker. It's amazing air fryer. It's got its own temperature probe. It's it's hooked up to the Wi-Fi, and you can go out and take a walk, and it'll tell you how your your steak's coming along, and turn itself off, and yeah, you know, all kinds of things. But here in Thailand, we have 222 to 240 volts, and of course, this company makes theirs at 110. Now, I couldn't find any 220 volt models. Now you can spend $150 and get some transformer, a transform from 220 down to 110. But that's not really good when you're pulling the kind of wattage, you know, 1500 watts of that. And it's too big, it's bulky. So I keep looking for somebody who's built a nice one over here. And uh, I may get an air fryer because they're they're fast and they're convenient. Now today, I'm expecting the arrival of those steaks from the place I found last week when I went to the grill place. And that's Bangkok Beef. The guy's name's Greg. And uh, it's not inexpensive. It's not inexpensive but I'm not sure that it is actually expensive either. Uh, I ordered minimum inch and a half, maximum two inch thick, ribeyes, chuck eyes, chuck roll, and some minced, they call it minced. I don't know what that makes that different than ground beef. I really don't. What's the difference between minced and ground beef? But that comes shipped in a refrigerated or in a freezer truck at minus 12 degrees Celsius. And it'll arrive today, but I don't expect that I'll be eating one because when you spend this much for meat, I think that I'll take one out and let it thaw in the refrigerator for 24 hours rather than cook it from frozen or fast defrost it uh, like a bowl of water. I could do that, but I want to give it the best chance of being its best self. Now there's another way, th way of thinking about this. Maybe, maybe I take the two chuck eyes I've got and cook one straight from frozen and let the other one uh, thaw 24 hours before cooking and then mentally make note after I eat them both, was there really a big difference? If the uh, defrosting earlier makes a difference, I'll let you know. You know I, it's, I've never taken cooking meat so serious as I'm taking this. And part of the reason for that is the fact that if all you're eating is meat, if that's all you're going to eat is the meat, you don't have potatoes, you don't have sweet potatoes, you don't have baked bean and corn, you don't have any mashed potatoes and gravy next to your steak. If you're not doing any of that and you're just doing the steak, by God, you really like to do that well. Now today, I just asked Noy, we're gonna be making this meatball with meatball with bacon and I think egg, uh, bacon and egg meatball. We found a recipe on one of the carnivore channels. Looked really good. So I asked if she would do it, and she's gonna do that for lunch. So 
that's my poolside update for now on day eight. Uh, stay tuned, I'll be right back when the meat arrives and let you see what's happening. Opening it. All righty. I know you opened it. There you go. Well, welcome back. Welcome. This is the box of meat. It came in a truck in a big. Came from the post office. Came from the post office, really. Yes. Actually, I don't know where it came from. But it's very cold and came in a very, very big cooler uh, that looks super well insulated. And ordered this from Bangkok Beef. Frozen French fries. I think they stole the box from the French fries. Wow. Okay. Mm. I'll tell you what we need. I need to get one of these that actually fits in the oven. Okay. Let me show these. These are the ribeyes. But you know, this is not, I'll probably put the prices up on these. I said one and a half to two inches. Uh, these steaks feel very cold. Minus three degrees Celsius. Minus five degrees Celsius. Minus 2.7 degrees Celsius. Wow. The ribeyes. Uh, they're about one and a half inches on the skinny side, about one and five eighths on the fat side, about one and a half to one and five eighths on that. That's the ribeyes. Now, what we need to do is put them back in the ribeye bag because that label. Put one of those, you know, just put them in the, in the back of the bag. This is Silver Farm Minced Ribeye. This is minced ribeye from Silver Farm, is what this is. And it's, it's like ground beef, I guess. Haven't had it. This is a different brand. They're both 80-20. This is minced USA Chuck. This is Chuck minced, and that's ribeye minced.
These are called ebony check eyes. Right at one and a half inches. Right at one and a half inches. So these are check eyes. Ebony. Four of them. Four chuck eyes. Total weight, one kilogram. So basically four ounce chuck eyes on every, well, I shouldn't say one kilogram. Total weight is a little more than one kilogram. I'll put it on the, the thing. And last one. These are Jack Creek ribeyes. Same inch and a half thickness. Little over a kilogram for these two. Jack Creek ribeyes. So let's take Let's take a chuck eye. Let's take a chuck eye and a Jack Creek ribeye. And we're gonna put them in the refrigerator and let these thaw. The rest, the rest we'll put in the freezer. That's all. Okay. Put here. That's all, folks.